This year, two outgoing adventurous dialysis patients take their dialysis machine, put it on a raft, and float 72 miles with up to class four rapids. What were they thinking? Let's meet the Whitewater Seekers now. Dan from Utah, hemodialysis patient, skier, hiker, adventurer. Bill from Seattle, 20 years on hemo, rafter, hiker, world traveler. Rogue River, 215 miles long in Southwest Oregon. Last four days we've been whitewater rafting and seeing a lot of great sights, a lot of a lot of animals. Had a lot of fun with uh, paddles and wetness and uh, jet boats would pass by and spray us. <laughs> In the public imagination, dialysis is something that is very grim and severe, and and uh, you know the image of is of this unit of you know people with a, a pale pallor of sickness, and and then to hear that someone's bringing the dialysis machine on the boat and all this stuff and. Um, just nursed us down the river, it felt like, but it, it's been exciting and fun. They made it a fun river trip. They, they, that was, you know, their job to safely give us the experience of running the road. You know, now that we've gone some little waves, it's time for some bigger ones, and this definitely proves that anything's possible. Um, not just bringing the machines along, but feeling good enough to, to be able to do this. The Rogue River logistics were met with plenty of experience from the outfitters. Okay, can we do this trip? And I was talking to the owner of this company, Rogue Wilderness Adventures, Brad, and uh, I was a little sheepish about all the gear we were going to have to have. And, and he just said, you know, you just called the right guy. And I said, how's that? And he shared that his dad had been on dialysis and he had taken him down the river, but being an in-center, uh, I'm sure it was a two-day run or something down the river. And, uh, and so he was really excited about the idea of doing this. And, and, and they had the imagination to see that this would, this would work, this would be good. And they were right. They made it work. right in the timber lines. There will be some mosquitoes. If you guys don't have some, I've got some extra bug juice. And when it gets dark, it gets dark as can be. So coming into dinner, grab your headlamps, that kind of thing. And it kind of hit close to home with a lot of our staff having family members, friends, that kind of thing that uh, have to deal with dialysis in their daily lives. It was really neat to see it come down and, you know, we feel lucky to be a part of it. And, you know, it wasn't a whole lot we had to do. They had themselves taken care of, and yeah, it worked out great, and look forward to doing more trips. Well, um, fortunately for me, I was running in the fun boat with all the people, and I didn't have to carry any gear, so this trip was awesome for me. Uh, one of our other guides had a, a pretty heavy boat. We can all run a heavy boat, so it, it really wasn't an obstacle at all. Everything ran really smoothly. Bill and Dan's dialysis machines were hauled up to the lodge and set up with a little help from their friends. Yeah, the staff was great. That's the first things they unloaded, um, just to make sure that uh, the dialysis machines turned on. Hauled it all the way up to the, the area that we were staying at the lodge and uh, broke down all the gear, set it all up. Everything is working just fine. Got on treatments that were flawless treatments. Not uh, 
uh, many alarms or anything like that and enjoyed company in a big Barca lounger. Uh, meals were catered right to us. That was kind of nice. So we just were able to enjoy the, the end of a hard day rowing. Great. Is that doing good in here? Yep. We're doing, great. Uh -huh. doing well. Yeah. Right. We'll all check back in a little bit. Okay, was that, you know, I'd put it right next to the foundation, usually there's gravel. But that was when I thought we'd be in a cabin, not yeah. a nice building like this. Good. I wish it didn't feel so much like a moonshot. I felt, I wish it felt more like, you know, driving to Spokane. And just like, you're glad you got there, but people should be doing it every day. One small cannulation for, it did feel like that. It felt like, because it, you know, nobody wanted it to not turn on and there's no reason for it not to turn on, but if it hadn't, it wouldn't have. And, we would have had to deal with it, but it was just, uh, you know, when things work out, you know, we expect things sometimes not to work out in this world. So uh, when they do, uh, it just felt good that um, I think everybody was having a good time and nobody wanted a, a rain cloud to come into the, to the room. And so uh, seeing those green bars, yeah, you know, we, we got... We got there, and uh, that's what was supposed to happen, you know. And uh, I don't think it was like the moon landing. It sh it should be much more routine than that. So Rogue River conquered. What's next on the horizon? <laughs> well, I think one of the next ones we're going to try and pull off is the Colorado River, which I think is a little bit more to staging. Uh, getting dialysis supplies and the machines down. This was kind of a, um, a test run for uh, rafting and <clears throat> there's, there's really, uh, you can start thinking about going down the Colorado, which that seems like uh, a daunting thing. But I had never thought about going down the Colorado, you know, but now I think it's possible. I think we can do it, take a 14 day trip and, uh, you know, see, see. I, think, I think it'll work. When asked what they would change. Yeah, we would have packed more dialysate, made it a longer trip. <laughs> Definitely. That, that's all I changed, though. I mean, it was the absolute perfect trip. 20 years ago, I wouldn't have thought I'd still be on dialysis and, and uh, just out in the wilderness. But you just don't know. So you have to just keep dialyzing, and you'll be surprised what you can do.